Hey guys, this is Austin. Today I'm here with something that's just a little bit different. This is a Hasselblad camera attachment for the Moto Z. Now the camera on this guy is absolutely no joke. However, with the true zoom, you're actually adding an entirely different camera system to the back of the phone. So this is the true zoom. Now it actually kind of feels by itself like a camera. However, you can take it to a Moto Z and there you go, simple as that. So the true zoom itself actually feels a lot like a proper camera. So you've got a dedicated shutter button, and it's got a nice sort of hefty feel in the hand with a little bit of a grip. Also inside, it looks like we actually have a carrying case. So the cool thing about Moto Mods is that they're super easily detached and reattached. So if you want though, you don't want to have this extra bulky thing, you just slide it into this little carrying case. While the true zoom definitely does add some bulk to the phone, it's not crazy. So I slide it in my pocket, it actually fits no problem. It might be a little bit thicker than what I want to carry around every day. However, when you're done with it, it's easy enough to just take it right off and it's no big deal. To go along with the true zoom, there's also the brand new Moto Z Play. So the Moto Z Play is a more mid-range version of the Moto Z. So inside, you're rocking a Snapdragon 625 instead of the 820, and you're also getting a 1080p screen versus 1440p. However, as far as the build goes, this is pretty much identical. There is one small upgrade with the Moto Z Play though, and that is the re-edition of a headphone jack. Now that might not seem like a big deal, however, both of its bigger brothers are completely lacking any kind of headphone jack. You're forced to use USB-C. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That looks like a thing right there. So the first thing I noticed is that the zoom is fast. <laughs> so it is a 25 to 250 millimeter lens. Now mind you, you do definitely lose a lot of light. So it's something like f6.5 when you actually zoom in. So it's more for like outdoor situations. But if you need that zoom, this is not something you're gonna be able to get on a normal smartphone. So we have the full auto mode. If we expand it out, we can also pick black and white. We could also go for the raw mode. It's also clear there's not a huge sensor inside here. So honestly, it's probably a little bit bigger than most smartphone sensors, but definitely nowhere near anything like a proper point and shoot. Speaking of, we have what is probably the best point and shoot out there right now, the Sony ARX100 Mark IV. Now side by side, while the Moto Z is definitely a little bit longer, the thickness actually isn't too bad. Whoa, that was quite the flash, wow. So this also has a Xenon flash. I'm curious to see how much of a difference that makes to battery life. When it comes to actual image quality, the true zoom is good but not amazing. A lot of that is due to the small sensor and lens. The laws of physics limit what you can do in such a thin package. While having that extra zoom range is really helpful when you have solid lighting, it does hurt low light performance. There's a massive advantage in just using the built-in camera on the Moto Z Play. Get some more light and it fares better, but it still trails behind the Note 7, which is the best smartphone camera out right now. Once you use the zoom though, you can get shots you would just miss with a normal smartphone. The ability to compress the back really isn't possible with a normal wide angle lens. Color and sharpness are more in line with a regular point and shoot versus a DSLR, but the raw and black and white modes can help pull more out of the camera. Just don't expect anything crazy. The true zoom name is no joke. That really is the main advantage. You'll be able to get your hands on it on September 15th for $250. It might be a bit on the pricey side, but considering what you get, it's actually not a bad package.